this day in the furniture repairman. Today we're going to work on rescuing this laminate butcher block. Now on the top you can see all the damage. On the bottom you can see the after where we brought it to and this video is going to show you how we achieved that. No, we did not relaminate it. We did this with a full finish. I'm pulling this back and what I'm looking at right now is the lightest color I have on there. That's what I want to start with. So here I go. I'm already spraying color on there. I want to get something going. I want to cover up all those burn marks. At least get a good look at this thing. And I'm going fast. I speeded the video up because there's no reason to watch me spray in real time. I wish I uh, actually sprayed this quick. I just don't. So right about there you see my normal spray paste. Now I'm going back now with a second color. I jumped ahead and this color is a little bit of a raw sienna. Now I'm not spraying this equally. I'm making hot spots. I want this color to have movement. I want it different in one place than the next. I don't want it even. I want organic. Now I'm coming back again with some clear over the top of everything and the clear kind of lets me see what I got going on here. So here goes a nice coat of clear. I think this is sealer. I haven't switched to my varnish yet. And I want to take a good look and see how I'm looking. I'm looking for that base light color. And there we go. I'm not looking so bad right now. I think I'm doing pretty good. Now the next thing I need to do is add some of that green line in. So I have my base color in. So unfortunately I didn't video the green line, but we're going to jump to the green lines I put in the piece to mimic all that green in there. And here we go. Oh my God, what maniac attacked this piece. How could this possibly work? What did I think? But I'm going to show you how I do this. I've done this a number of times, and this is the way that I find works best. I put my color on heavy, I let it dry, and then I sand it back off. And what I get is I get movement in the color. I can sand it off almost to nothing in some places, and I can let it gradually become more. And I can do that with a sandpaper. It's very hard to do that with a brush and color. And it lets me have tremendous control because I'm removing. So I'm speeding this up and you're seeing me sand through this piece and it still looks uh, almost like a horror show. Like maybe I had my eyes closed when I was doing it, but have some faith, okay? I've done something like this once or twice before Never this exact thing, but we're going to go after it now with a little bit of a, it, it's not quite white, it's white with a little bit of color in it, a little bit of a yellow in it, a raw sienna in it, and I'm just going to go over the top of this, and I'm just going to add it in unequally, because I'm still trying to create that look where it's not equal all the way around. So there we go, here comes my white, I'm slowing it down, and this is what we're looking at. Now to make it all look the way I want it to look, we're going to turn it. So pull this back. I'm a step closer. And that's all I'm looking for if I'm a step closer. So here I come again with my clear. The clear will let you see through the paint that I'm fogging on there. It'll give me a very good look of what everything is looking like. So a quick quote of clear. Again, sped up video. And let's pull it back. I'm not looking so terrible right now. Maybe I got an idea what I'm doing here. Not a real good one, but maybe a small one. Now, a lot of guys would walk away here, but I don't walk away here. I want very, very good work leaving my shop. I want to make a video out of it, and I want my furniture restoration friends to look at it and be like, damn, that was amazing. So that's who I'm doing this for. It's a little bit cocky on my part, but I think I can make this thing look just amazing at the end. So here we go, a little heavier yellow. And you can see it's heavy in some spots, it's not so heavy in others. That's very important. And now I'm coming back and you see me spraying real slow now. And there's a little bit of white in this and I'm going a little bit more even. And I'm just trying to get a little bit color, just tamp down a little bit, I guess you would say. So we're trying to just ease it in and get to that look. And you can see that grain, you can still see it underneath, but it's not so huge like it was before. So now I'm coming back with the clear and you can see the clear is almost like magic. It just makes the colors just join together and blend together. You can see through the clear very nicely. 
And again, we're sped up, but we're still going. And this is a lot of coats on this. And let me tell you, I didn't wait a lot of dry time in between this. So here we go. Not too bad. Dan's maybe not as crazy as he looked a few minutes ago. But am I done? No, I'm not done. I'm not even close to done. All right. I'm coming back. I want to put some more of this sienna color in there. Sienna is kind of like a yellowish, brownish sort of color that furniture guys use. Now, I'm doing this in a spray booth, okay, with professional tools. But you can do this at home with rattle cans. You could just go buy two or three lacquer rattle cans of a couple different colors and fix the butcher block right on your own. You need some whites. You need some yellows. You need to blend some together. So here I come now. I'm putting my white back on. And you can see the pattern that I have. A little bit of a yellow, a little bit of a white, a little bit of a light yellow, a little bit of a tannish white, back and forth, back and forth. I'm just kind of ratcheting my way towards that color. And then when I'm done, I come back with my clear and that kind of melts everything and binds it all together. And what I want to get to is I want to get to that base color where I could look at it and say, okay, my base is there. So I'm pulling this back right here. I'm looking at it. I'm definitely in the ballpark, okay? I'm not sitting in the dugout where I want to be, but I'm in the ballpark, and I can see where the dugout's at. So we're going to show you the next step, and that's the really cool thing. Here it is. We have to make those butcher block lines. So I could have done this with tape. But what I decided to do was to cut MDF into strips. And the reason why is I wanted to move it around. I was also worried about the tape pulling up my varnish from it being so fresh. So we cut it into the exact width of the butcher block. Now I got a little warm tan toner here from Mohawk, one of my favorite companies. And this is Melanie, one of our repair techs. And you could see she's just slightly fogging that on. You can see how she's just way far away, and she's just letting that dust settle. Just a little kiss of color on there. We're not going too heavy. Why? Because if we try to get there too quick, it's never going to work. We need this color to have variance in it. We need difference in it. We need it heavy in one spot, light in the other. That's what's going to make this whole thing work. So here we go, and now we're coming back with some Colonial Maple, which has a little more red. We haven't moved our sticks yet, but we are going to move them. And that's part of this system is you're going to move your sticks and you're going to adjust them. And you can see that just that very soft spray she does right there. Such a perfect hand on that that she uses just a, a gentle motion and she's using her eyes. She's really looking at what she's doing. And we're just painting inside of those open areas. That's really what we're focusing on. And now here we go. Not too bad, not too shabby. We're looking pretty good right here. So what we're gonna do next is move the sticks. So you could see just that little bit of fogging, what a difference that made. That really was more powerful than it seemed. So we're gonna move these sticks around a little bit and we're gonna create a pattern that we feel like is a little closer to the butcher block. And we're gonna spray over some areas again and we're gonna cover other areas and protect them. We're gonna leave some light. We're going to leave some medium. We're going to create some darkness. We have the boards there cut in different lengths, and it's more of just a random thing. And we're just going to protect and guess. That's it. Everything we're doing is with no plan. We're just jumping out of the airplane and hoping that damn parachute opens. So here she goes again with the Colonial Maple, and we're going to do a little bit of a fog on top, and you can see how far away from the piece she is. And you can see that color just settling down right on top of that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is a very talented repair tech. Her technique here is just about flawless. I truly believe the only way to improve upon this is if she wore a New York Mets baseball cap. That's the only way. So here we go. We're going to pick up our sticks again. And this is what we're looking at. Now, we're still looking not quite where we want to be. So we do this one more time. We move these sticks one more time, and we're going to jump ahead to that part because there's no reason to keep showing you the same thing. You've got the gist of it right here. So here we go. We're going to just take off a few more, and then we're going to jump to the next stage. Now, the next stage is when we fog a color on the whole piece, and you're going to see how we pull it together. So this is where we decided to stop. That does not look too good. 
not at all what we're looking for. So we got to figure out what to do. Well, let's put some more color on. Here we go. Warm tan and repair tech Melanie. She's going to just fog this on and she's going to do this by eye. And you can see how far away she is. And she's just shaking that hand and she's just letting that settle. And it's an uneven spray. She's high in one spot. She's low in another. She's watching her color. This is very hard to do because you're squeezing the trigger and the color's landing there about 10 seconds later. So it, you really got to just take your time and go slow. You want to sneak up on this guy. If you get it wrong, it's no big deal. Just spray it all over again and go, go a second time. Go a third time. It's going to take a few tries if this is the first time you're doing it. Believe me, a lot of this stuff I do straight off of gut, gut instinct. But there's a reason why that gut instinct is there. It's because I had to do it many times. I screwed up a lot before I got it right. So in my shop, with finishing, quite often we say we fail until we succeed. And that's kind of what happens. Now, I got a little bit lucky here. This is one of my first try. This is what I ended up with. You tell me, would you accept that? I think that looks pretty damn good for what we started with. That's definitely a winner there. This is Dan, the furniture repair man. Now, every time we restore a piece, it doesn't go into the landfill. And one last tree gets cut down to make a new one. That's why I fixed this piece, because it's part of a huge wall unit. And all that wall unit is now back in place. And no trees are getting cut down to replace it. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you can remember to like and subscribe, watch the other videos. If you have comments, put them below. I'll try to answer them back. Questions, the same thing. Check us out at DanTheFurnitureRepairMan.com. Y'all have a good day.